Hey internet friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay Lijo, and today I'm going to be speaking about some differences in language when you're listening to someone who has extroverted sensing, SE, versus introverted sensing, SI. If you'd like to talk to me about this subject or anything related to the cognitive functions, I have a link to book a video session with me below on SNEP. So let's talk about these sensory things. All right, so one thing I always like to make note of as it relates to listening to someone and trying to say, is this intuition or is this sensory that I'm hearing? If a person is sensory dominant, you should be able to almost paint a picture of the things in which they are talking about. They should be referencing more literal things in the physical reality. Uh, now, if you were to compare that to someone who is intuition, uh, you should not really be able to paint a picture of the subjects in which they're speaking about. A great reference point is myself for this. What am I talking about? Cognitive functions, how the brain works in these different areas. Can we paint a picture of it, folks? No, we can't. So when you are speaking to someone or listening to someone who is sensory dominant, you should generally be able to see for yourself, see in your mind uh, what the things look like that they're talking about because it is in fact sensory, the physical reality. And we're going to just hit some of the main points you may be able to catch in the language of the person who is SE versus SI. So starting with SI, the information that they are sharing is going to have this kind of chronological progression, either forwards or backwards, almost as if it exists on a timeline or as the way I like to think of it is SI is referencing its information just kind of like a train would. Here's a train on a track, right? The train is either going forwards or backwards in some kind of strange land, right? And the axis of information uh, is coming either in front or behind the place where it is currently at. Now let's say someone changes the subject, they ask them about something different, they're going to take their language to a different point in time on the timeline, and now once they are here, they're going to again reference it forwards or backwards. With SI, the known order of how things progress, forwards or backwards, should be respected. Have you ever put together one of those like tables or cabinets from Ikea, and you get the instruction list of how to put this thing together. Listen, if someone with SI is not writing that instruction bit for you, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to put it together. Another note about SI is the known order in which things should be done. Uh, they want that to be respected by themselves, by you, by anyone. I was listening to someone recently on a YouTube video who has Savior SI. And they were talking about these kind of procedures with the pandemic and you know um, how things should be. And they got so angry over the um, intricacy of the procedure um, from one step to the next not being respected. And this person is very well known um, um, in the psychology arena. And to see that level of anger rise up from the specific order not just, not the subject, not nothing, the specific order of the sensory not being respected was simply fascinating. So let's now compare that to extroverted sensing SE. So if SI is a train, SE is surely a pogo stick. <laughs> so why do I say that? Well, if you look at the organizational functions um, on these accesses, so SI is organizing in terms of how it is ordering the sensory. SE is, is more of this chaotic function. It's not innately organizing, but it's on the axis of NI. What is NI doing? NI is very categorical in its approach to its information. So when SE is talking about the physical reality, the things in which exist, uh, they don't have to do it in a linear nature like SI, but they will do it in a more categorical nature because they have access to that introverted intuition no matter where it is in their function stack. So if you're talking to someone who has SE, uh, you may be talking about, I don't know, let's say boats, right? So they may give you some information about this boat. Oh, maybe some information about that other boat. Oh, did you hear about Joey and his boat? Okay, so it's all kind of like this chaos in terms of the information itself. Uh, it's all over the place, but it's all within the category of 
votes. And though I don't have extroverted sensing as a savior function, I still kind of will use it this way. So if my NI is locked into a subject matter, a category, if you will, that I think is important to talk about, uh, I will kind of, you know, have my whole theory go and I'll be like, oh, I need to find some sensory to slap in here so I don't sound like a crazy person. Now that SE is not really um, linear in terms of how it is being referenced. It is more just kind of being plopped in to fill the holes within the NI. And uh, again, it's fitting within the category um, versus fitting chronologically like SI is doing. So those are some examples on how you may catch the differences between introverted sensing and extroverted sensing when you're listening to someone speak in their language, in their writing, I actually love assessing the cognition of a person uh, through writing. I think it's fascinating. So hope you guys learned something from this video. I'll see you in my next one. So long. The subject, you guys see this? It's ridiculous. I have to deal with this, Indy.